Okay, uh, we have keys now on the doors. So uh, the system is designed in order so you don't lock your keys inside. So how would it be the only way to lock the door? With a key from the outside or when you're sitting, the lock. Because if you lock it with the door open, you're going to activate the lock so you won't be able to close the door. That way, you will never leave the keys inside the cab. The switches inside the cab, you got the windshield wiper uh, control, you have the headlights, you have the dimmer switch, and you also have the battery with the start switch. It's very important that you, when you're getting ready to start the engine, full battery switch on, approximately five seconds it's going to give you the sign that it's self-checked in the needles right there three four five as soon as you see the needles checking like that the thing the the, the important thing is that with the multiplexing system you have to send a signal to each of the accessories that are attached to the multiplexing system and they have to reply in order to to finish the the cycle and at that moment, after five seconds, you'll be able to start the truck. Air brake system fill in, so it's an inlet to serve the, the air pressure to the chassis uh, uh, reservoirs. We have the studs in, to jump this truck or another truck. We have the groove for the windshield wiper fluid level. Then we have the, the air horn and, uh, and the Q uh, push uh, button. We also have the access for the windshield wiper fluid. And you can do that with the cap down or with the cap up. There's a secondary uh, cap behind this panel here. We'll see it when we lift up the cap. And there's another cap that you can refill it if you have the cap up. Region button, as you can see, it has three stages. The bottom is overriding the system. The center is standby. And the momentary, that's the one that you hold for three seconds if you're doing a stationary regeneration cycle. ABS diagnostic switch. And then the, the gauge mode. This will give you all the information that you require as engine hours miles and, uh, and all that information that you get from the display. Here we have the parking brake, air actuated, and the pump engagement. And it's like we usually do, one second down and then press D and your pump will be engaged. Remember to look for the two green lights that will tell you that the pump is fully engaged. Okay, the fluid capacity tag, it will remind you the type of fluid as engine oil, engine coolant, transmission, nowadays is the transient and power steering and so forth. And it uh, even reminds you the, the PSI pressure for the front and rear tires. And always remember, this is the shop order number that is in several plates around the truck. Okay, let's talk about the overhead controls in the driver's side. You have the on and off but, uh, toggle switch for the jake brake. And then, then you have the different the speed, high, medium, and low. I always like to start in medium and then work my way up or down. And then you have your gauge, the, the fluid level gauge for the depth fluid for the regeneration system. And then you have your mirror controls, heater for the controls. Okay, so you have the ATC uh, control switch and uh, the air horn with the brake. When it was manufactured, we provide the height, the length, and the GVWR in, uh, for the truck. So if you add another accessory that uh, make it taller or longer, you have to uh, redo the sticker here. And it also calls for the capacity that is four person.
So we have the, the, the EVS 3000 Allison transmission display and control. And then you, you can select your reverse, neutral, D for drive, mode for defaults. And remember the two buttons to read the oil, the, the fluid level. As you can see here, uh, we have, we're in the stage where we can see physically the, in graphics, the, the, the truck. And, uh, and it's showing that one door is open, which is this door. So how does it help to the driver? If I release my parking brake, that light is going to come on. And it's telling me there's something triggering that light. It could be a compartment. It could be a quartz light that is not stove. It could be a, a, an accessory that hasn't been like a deck gun or something that had the sensor. So uh, I can take a quick look to the display and I realize that it's this door. I close the door. The door closes here in the graphic and the light goes away. And that's a big help for the, for the firefighters because if you don't have this system, you literally have to get out of the truck and try every single door and every single accessory until you find what is triggering that light. Now, with this big help like this, it will take seconds to take care of the situation. Okay, in case that you release your parking brake, light comes on and then you refer to the display and the display it's uh, maybe there's two, three things at the same time. You can pull the text information. So more than a graphic, you also have text information. And it will call for the front door cap is open in this case. So the multiplexing Vista display would allow you to turn on lights, turn them back off. But uh, one of the important features is the red button here. When you press this button here, it will turn on automatically all the lights that you require to have on while you're driving to an emergency. And you can turn it off. You can go to the next menu and then, then you can manually turn individual in case that you need that. Then you have compartment lights work light if they work with the generator it will it will send you a reminder to engage the generator low manager override for the firefighter really there's no need to override the the, the load manager knowing that the load manager is going to administrate the bolts to uh, shed some uh, accessories to preserve those uh, bolts in in place so uh, th there's no I can't, I can't think about something, a situation that a firefighter will override that is just for mechanics. So uh, you, you have the yard text too and with a display. Then you have more lights. Turn off, turn them off. Then you, you have the flood lights, left, left scene light compartment lights once again it always show the load manager in this stage where you handling electronic or lights that way you can turn them on and off and knowing that this the multiplexing system will control the the right amount of bolts in your system if it's required because for some reason is the bolts are getting too low it will kick the high idle automatically and there are some SPOs for, for firefighters that are required to activate high idle, so that is also available. You can manually activate it or it will activate it by itself when it's needed. And now you have uh, every seat but the driver has the brackets for the breathing air bottles. And uh, here we have the inlet for the AC. It's very important that uh, on your uh, uh, on your main schedule, include this. Just remove the screws, remove the, the grill, and then just wash it off, dry it, and put it back. And it is a reusable filter. For the daily check, you don't need to raise up the cap to check your uh, fluids. So you have oil, fluid, transmission, the 
radiator reservoir, the steering wheel, and here you will see the side glass for the radiator. So everything is right here for the daily check. So we have the siren. The, remember we have the siren switch and the brake switch. We also have a trash line or a front jump line. Uh, it's a one and a half discharge. Most likely it's gonna end up with a one and three quarter hose attached to it. We also have the pre-connect compartment. And as you can see, when you have this lid open and uh, if you attempt to raise up the cap, you're gonna destroy your grill. So this is the first thing I will check if I'm getting ready to lift up the cap. And you will see when we, when we lift up the cap, the room that is gonna be left once the cap is all the way up. Recess air horns. And then the officer size. You have the cat oil fill and side glass. And as you can see, you have the side glass here. And then you have your fill port to refill the, the hydraulic fluid for the cat air compressor. Then you have a two and a half discharge with the controls in the in the driver's side and then you have a four inch large diameter discharge with a six inch intake like a master intake you also have the drain specifically for this one you have open close for the blue green and uh, and black for the discharges you have your cross lay uh, pre-connect compartments in here so you have a two and a half, one and a half, and one and a half pre-connect to the triple eight in there. So now we have an outlet, and a calf air outlet. So this is not air pressure from the chassis. This is air pressure from the compressor of the calf system. So uh, now you can hook up a line and, uh, and, and have air pressure for tools, or for to inflate a tire. But remember, it's from the calf compressor. So if you're using air pressure, that's when you're gonna change it from auto to fix. So if you're using the air pressure, if you're using that compressor as an air compressor, you have to put it in fix instead of auto. And then open and use your outlet, air outlet. Then we have the cap release control panel and as you can see you have your uh, your handle to release your safety device or safety bar and I have the the, the battery switch in the on position and uh, at least in the accessory or appliance and all I did is a clear and lift out the cap with the toggle switch Remember, oh, you already checked, but remember to check everything inside the cab that nothing is loose, especially radios, helmet, map, books, anything that could fly through the windshield, because it will. So now, what I'm waiting for is the two clicks. Remember in the presentation, wait for the two clicks. One, two clicks, that's it. So for safety reason, I wanna bring it down just to establish contact with it. I don't wanna put all the weight in the bracket, okay? Now we have access for the engine. And here we have two batteries in each side. We have the lock mechanism. This is the one that it's going to detect in the multiplexing system if you release all the pressure of the hydraulic. So you have your uh, main dry shaft. Uh, you have the PTO for the CAF uh, air compressor transmission, 3000 EVS Allison transmission. And then you have your engine, turbo system, dipstick for the transmission, dipstick and fill port for the engine steering wheel, reservoir for the radiator, 
So, like I said, if you have the cap up, you can access your fluid from here and refill the tank. That's why we eliminate this little reservoir. It's plugged, so it's not in use. And uh, we use this one that is a, a little bit bigger and uh, it lasts longer. So this is pretty much the, the reservoir for the radiator with the side glass and the sensor. And this sensor, you will call for the light and the, and the gauge closer, saying that, uh, that, uh, that your uh, radiator fluid is low. You see, they're lined up. So uh, remember, one of the most important things to do when you're getting ready to lift up the cap is be sure that this lid is closed. Because if it would have been open, it would have damaged the grill. And realize how much space you have. So it's good, if you're going to add brackets or accessories in somewhere in the bumper, front bumper, just bring up the, the cap and see how much space do you have. So now we're going to get ready to uh, lower the cap. So once again, we refer to the controls. This time, we're going to pull the handle. When we pull the handle, what we're doing is retracting the safety bar uh, behind the lift cylinder. So for that, I'm going to raise it up just a bit. So we pull, remove the, uh, retract the safety bar, and use the toggle switch to bring the cap down. Once it passed that spot, we're done with, uh, with the safety bar, put the handle in place, and finish bringing down the cap. Always remember, when you see that the cap is sitting down, wait three seconds to release that hydraulic pressure. One, two, three. Now I know for sure that the hydraulic pressure is gone. Okay, let's talk about the pump panel. We have our mas master intake and discharge gauges with uh, the testing ports, sound alarm, and then we have the gauges, the engine gauges. So we have a tachometer and uh, the temperature, oil, and uh, battery bolts. And uh, a reminder here, black needle is for water, red needle is for air. And that's when we're using the cap system. We'll be talking about it in a little bit. We have our pre-connect, both sides. And then we have, in blue, the discharge. They're capable of carrying water, foam, and air to create their compressed air foam system. Then we have an evacuation air horn button, the left flood light, flood light in the right, and the heater. That was good. We have discharge gauges for every single discharge. And then, if you see close here, there's a safety cap. And that is for the air compressor for the cap system. So uh, what we recommend, if, you, if you're going to be, if you're getting ready to shoot water and then add foam, and then at the end, adding uh, 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 air pressure to the discharge, we recommend that once you engage your pump, you go ahead and engage your air compressor. Why is that? Remember that if you're exceeding your RPM more than 950, it's going to call for overspeeding. So you're going to have to reduce your, uh, your RPM in order to have the compressor engaged. Then we have a, temp a temperature gauge just for the compressor. 
So this is the, the gauge that is going to tell you that you're overheating once you pass from 250 higher and it's going to go for high temperature, over temperature. So as soon as it reaches 250, it's going to automatically disengage. Then you have your foam level gauge and then your water level gauge for the, each tank. 30 gallons, 1,030 gallons. Then you have your relief valve control. This is the one that you're gonna recirculate water, set it up to the pressure that you need to stay on, and then you're gonna crank your valve until you get your light on. Once you get your light on, it's set up to that amount of pressure that you already preset. Then you have your throttle control, acceleration, deacceleration, and idle kill, kill idle button in the center. Then you have your green light for pump engage as a throttle ready, meaning that the pump is fully engaged. And then you have your master switch. Right now it's open, so it's an electronic master drain for the pump. And then you have open and close. You see that's the, the, the manual override. In case that there's a failure here, you can complete opening or closing the valve manually. Bleeder for the intake. You help while you're priming, you're drafting, you release air, and then close and finish your drafting. Two, two and a half discharge on the driver's side with uh, open close valves. Then you have your tank fill, tank to pump, and also override for the auto fill. So you have on, and uh, as soon as you reach the high level in the tank, the valve closes automatically. When you start losing level on the tank, the, the, the valve will open. If you have a failure on this, then you can do it manually. You see? And then it now is fully closed, but you have to leave it fully open in order to work with the automatic fill. There is a generic uh, layout of what the phone system is and uh, it's nothing more than uh, turning on your uh, power up, the display. As soon as you power up, whatever discharge that's capable of water and foam, it will, it will go to that manifold so all, they'll all be charged up with foam and whoever you use, it will carry foam. And then once you realize that you're going to require air for that foam, you put it in auto, you're going to see that needle matching the black needle, and that's when you're going to provide air to one, two, three, or the five discharges. If you're flowing with one, this is the jump line, which is one and a half inch, so probably at that point you're between 60 and 70 psi to serve this line, and if you're getting ready to open other lines, for that, you're going to have to increase your PSI. When you increase your PSI, that red needle is going to follow the water, so air will follow water pressure. That way, you, you will get more pressure because you have more discharges open. That's how the balancing valve works in the cap system. And then you have a dry primer, open close for the auxiliary inlet, two and a half and then drain valves for every single discharge and intakes. Engine cooler and air blowout, and that's for the front discharge. So this is the auxiliary outlet for the air compressor, and this is only for mechanics to use, because if they have to uh, reset, repair, or do anything with the compressor, at the end, they're going to have to test it to see if it's flowing the 100 CFM that is a, uh, the manufacturer says it does. So uh, that's where you hooked up a, uh, a hose with an airflow meter and, uh, and then run the test. So uh, that's the auxiliary outlet for the CAS compressor. So we're going to use the autofill that uh that it's here so we're gonna turn the system on and now we're gonna access water to the tank 
Now we're going directly to the tank. And as you can see, the valve is open. And as soon as it senses that the water tank is full, it's gonna automatically close that valve. Now we're engaged, pump is engaged. We're gonna go ahead and engage the air compressor. Now we got a green light and we're making air. So as soon as we go out of, if I increase the, the water pump pressure, it's gonna increase the amount of air. You see that? Now the, the air, air pressure drains and it, it goes along with, uh, with, uh, with the water pressure. So let's, let me show you something else. Let's say that I want to engage the pump, but I, my RPMs are too high. So at this point, I'm going to go ahead and increase my RPM. I'm over a thousand right there, okay? And I'm going to try to engage it. It's going to go for an over speed. That means that if that would engage, I would have destroyed the PTO. So there's a safety sensor there that won't allow the PTO to engage if you are too high on your RPM. So if I reduce my RPM, look at your RPM, close to 1,000, maybe 960, and it would engage.